Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The King of Israel, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps this week, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. So let us pray. I invite you to please hold your palms up so we can bless them. Almighty, ever-living God, we ask that you sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ, the King of Enoch's exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us joyfully enter into the city our Lord has prepared for us. As, as we prepare to read our gospel reading. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the great crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches and went out to meet him and cried, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found an ass and sat upon it, as it is written. Fear no more, O daughter of Zion. See, your king comes, seated upon an ass's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus had been glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done this for him. The Gospel of the Lord. at my chair. All glory, Lord, and daughter to you. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow caused our Savior to take flesh and to submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. My God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, oh, why have you From the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, and those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Please rise. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head, and there were some who were, indig who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perf perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her, Jesus said. Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you there, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and said to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is the blood of the covenant which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their face shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, 
This very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if, if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time, and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come with the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind, behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all of the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. 
But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So we went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and he wept. And as soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. And Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. And Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? And they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and then they had mocked him. They stripped him of, his, him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place called Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him the wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. They passed by, reviled him. The passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, uh -huh. you, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave out a loud cry and breathed his last. Please kneel. Please rise. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and Joseph, and Salome. Those women had followed him when he was in Galilee and had ministered to him. There, was also, there were also many other women who had came up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate, and he asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down and wrapped him in the linen cloth and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. For the better part of 2,000 years, the church has read or proclaimed the account of Jesus' passion. In the early church, it would have been a tradition or a story that would have been handed on from one generation to the next orally until finally in some time a few hundred years after Jesus life and death and resurrection, the story was actually written down and shared with the community in written form. But it's always awe-inspiring for me to recognize that we come here today, 2,000 years later, and account for this same story, this same narrative, a narrative that was lived out by the Christian community in Jesus' time. A story that was shared when those early Christians would gather together at table and celebrate the breaking of the bread in commemoration and remembrance of Jesus. 2,000 years later, we gather here today with our own struggles, with our own challenges, with our own difficulties, with our own pain, with our own fears, just as that early Christian community did, not knowing what the future would hold. And we account this very same story. A story that is not just meant to be proclaimed and shared with each of us each and every year, but rather a story that is meant to be lived out. 
It is something that is not just simply told, but rather for the Christian it holds deeper meaning than that because it is something that is experienced. It is something that is taken to heart. We know that all of us could probably almost recite this story word for word after hearing it for so many years proclaimed. But it isn't just about learning this story. It isn't just about knowing the facts. The true meaning of this story goes much deeper into the soul of the human person. It dives into the soul of the human person and it touches our life in a deeper way because we know that all of us have experienced this passion. We've all experienced the passion of Jesus Christ in a deep and profound way in our own struggles, in our own challenges. And so we place our confidence and hope in knowing that we follow a Savior who would never abandon us, who remains ever faithful, and who remains committed to each one of us in this time and in this place as we come together once again to hear this reading proclaimed and to once again break bread with one another in remembrance of him. The instructions are simple, my friends. Enter into this week. How are you going to make this week different than all the rest? What are you going to do to set these next seven days apart from all of the other 365 days of the year? How are you going to use this time to deepen your faith and not just hear words, but rather allow this to spiritually touch your heart? The question is asked of those early Christians 2,000 years ago, and down through the millennia it is asked of us today. How do we set this week apart to make this time different for all of us? Let us take this opportunity to pray well with one another. Let us take this opportunity to invite our brothers and sisters to be here to pray with us through the Holy Triduum, entering into Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. Let us gather together as a strong community, recognizing that we have the freedom to practice our faith. And let us do so with grateful hearts that the Lord has not only left a message of love for us, but he became love itself. And love was crucified, love died, but love is never defeated. It rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures that had been passed on down throughout the centuries to those early Christians and to us today. We celebrate the gift of love that remains among us. And so as we hold our palm branches in our hands, as we recognize today that Jesus enters into our life in a triumphant way as king. Just a few days from now, he will also be recognized as somebody who deserved crucifixion. People will look at him not as a triumphant king, but as a horrible sinner. But we have the benefit of knowing the full story. We know that it wasn't Jesus' sins that crucified him, but it is ours. It is our burden to bear. So let us pray today that we may celebrate this most gracious sacrifice in a loving and profound way. Let us allow the love of Jesus to touch our hearts radically this week so that all of us may come to know the depth of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Let us celebrate in great preparation and anticipation the love that Jesus left for us on Good Friday, the image that he painted for us on Holy Thursday of the priesthood, and let us celebrate well that joyful resurrection on the day of Easter. These are the things that have been shared with us, our family and friends, invite us into this very special time. 
just as our Lord does. And so let us be mindful of that today and in the week ahead. Let us pray for one another that all of us may have the strength to recognize God's love at work in the world and let us commit ourselves to being a part of this most sacred time. Let us all please stand then for on the cross as throughout his life Jesus turned to God his Father so we turn to God our Father in need. Our response is Lord hear our prayer. For the church that recounting our Savior's passion and death will deepen our faith in Jesus and strengthen us in bearing witness to his awesome sacrifice, we pray. Lord, for leaders of nations, that they may choose to settle differences peacefully, rejecting the alternatives of war and violence, we pray. For our parish community, for the grace of a devout and holy observance of Holy Week and the sacred Paschal Tritium, we pray. For those who feel abandoned or without anyone to turn to, that they may realize that they can always turn to God and that God will never abandon them, we pray. Lord. For an end to the evils of racism, genocide, and all oppression throughout the world, we pray. For those who have died this past week, Mark Schaub, Sister Ruth Ann Baudry, John Carl, Julia Huberty, Maureen Schreiner, and Thomas Greeby, and especially for those who remembered at this Mass, Agnes Hermans, we pray. Heavenly Father, you write your law upon our hearts. Give us the courage to follow your law of love, the willingness to die to self, and the promise of eternal life with you. Hear this and all our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Please pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased for us our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In commemoration with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and commend that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up 
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, this holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to, confer, be pleased to look upon the offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, commend that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar may receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, and may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and now rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, you fill them with life, you bless them, and you bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Your announcements for this morning are as follows. As this is the start of Holy Week, we have posted the schedule for the Easter Triduum to our website. Please visit that website if you are interested in more information on that. You can also view it on the flyers in the back of church and on our Facebook page. On Holy Saturday, come to Sacred Heart Church at noon for the blessing of the Easter baskets According to tradition, baskets containing a sampling of Easter foods are brought to church to be blessed on Holy Saturday. The food items in the Easter basket, as well as at the Easter Sunday breakfast, will be the blessed food that is eaten. You, uh, all that food has special significance. So families are invited to start this wonderful tradition, and I believe Deacon Dale will be there again this year to, uh, to bless that at Sacred Heart Church at noon on Holy Saturday. You know, they, they haven't let me do it since my first year here Goofed when I all. when I had that incident. What was that? There was food missing out of all the baskets. Oh, that was yeah. true. That's some true. of it with Especially me. the wine. The wine was gone. <laughs> That's right. In celebration of our Divine Mercy Sunday in two weeks on April 11th, we will offer confessions, Eucharistic Adoration, Divine Mercy, Holy Hour at Holy Family Church beginning at 1.30 and everyone is welcome to attend that as well. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O sacred head surrounded by crown of piercing thorn, so wounded, reviled and put to scorn, the power of death comes o'er you, the glory 